శ్రీ దినేష్ త్రివేది సార్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ లైక్ టు థ్యాంక్ యూ అండ్ ఐ లైక్ టు థ్యాంక్ మై పార్టీ ఫర్ గివింగ్ మీ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు స్పీక్ ఆన్ వన్ ఆఫ్ మై ఫేవరెట్ టాపిక్ ద రైల్వేస్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ ఆల్సో ఫార్చునేట్ దట్ వీ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ ద ఆనరబుల్ ఫైనాన్స్ మినిస్టర్ అలాంగ్ విత్ దాట్ బికాస్ బేసికలీ ఐ వుంట్ సే టసల్ బట్ దిస్ సబ్జెక్ట్ మ్యాటర్ ఇస్ బిట్వీన్ ద ఫైనాన్స్ మినిస్ట్రీ అండ్ ద రైల్వే మినిస్ట్రీ in a while i'll go to the history of railway convention committee itself but before i do that let me tell you sir that i don't leave any forum i don't leave any occasion to praise the indian railways an indian railway is a amazing family and i can tell you without the any kind of contradiction that it is perhaps one of the best organization in the world and i also must tell you uh, that we are fortunate to have somebody like my dear and good friend suresh prabhu heading the railway at this point in time because railway certainly has been going through i'm not talking about recent couple of years back for years together railway has been going through certain difficulties i think the basic if i say that modernization process started was perhaps mother of sindhya ji another dear good friend he is no more he initiated lot of modernization process and the next was the vision 2020 of the then minister for railway honorable mamta banerjee ji who is the chief minister of west bengal now and i'm not trying to praise because she doesn't require the world is praising if you read this vision 2020 document i think it covers everything and in this uh, very uh, report of the railway convention committee lot of reference i saw has been made to this vision 2020 and very honestly when i took over as a minister for railways i said that this is going to be my bible this is going to be my basis on which i am going to take forward whatever they had started all of them they have done very good work during lalu ji's time there was some profit also but the most difficult period of financial i wouldn't say crisis but almost was during the time of six pay commission when honorable mamta ji took over as the rail mantri that was a really a trying time and and she did her very best to stay the railway through and lot of innovation took place so the reason i'm talking about all these things is at this juncture we are here and we are going to talk about resolutions to approve para 1112 etc of the convention committee to review the rate of the dividend payable to the railways so let me tell you and especially the entire house is there you can make out if you ask me at what stage of development a particular country is then that stage of development or what is the economy of a country just a minute just a minute sir as as i was mentioning that everybody feels that to become the railway minister is a huge thing but i only know what kind of difficulty the ministers of railway go through sir the other day i was with the honorable minister for railways and my friend suresh prabhu ji and it was around 5 o'clock at 5 o'clock he said that i have not had the chance to even have a cup of tea i have not even had a chance to have my lunch now this is the trying circumstances under which most of the railway ministers work 
and we need to find a solution. As I said, the best organization in the world, the most capable people we can think of are in the railways. And in order for an engineer to get an experience, his first preference would be railways. But what is happening today and the crush of the railway is the finances. Sir, I remember that when I was the railway minister, I had to borrow some, I think, 3,000 crores to put into the railway development fund. My point is, why the railway, their hands are tight, their legs are tight, they are not allowed to do whatever they want to do in terms of generating their own revenue. On top of it, if they have to pay interest as dividend on whatever capital the railway gets, I think it is impossible for any railway minister with any kind of caliber. Like I said initially, that we are fortunate that Suresh Prabhuji is a chartered accountant and he understands figures very well. And I also appreciate that he has to run around even to LICs and others to get resourced. See, sir, I have a very basic point. The very basic point is what are we going to do about the railways? I remember again, sir, that during the discussion of 12th draft document of the Planning Commission. I was part of that as a Railway Minister. At that point in time, sir, I had mentioned that what is the country wanting to do with the railways? The 2020 document was prepared under the leadership of Mamata Banerjee. Six pay commission. And this six pay commission, the burden of six pay commission suddenly was put on the railways. Sir, it, if it had not been for the leadership and collective wisdom of the people of the railway and Mamta Banerjee who created this Vision 2020, it would have been impossible. And perhaps I may not be wrong if I said that the railway would have stopped then and there. But a lot of patience, a lot of persuasion and a lot of expenditures were also cut but not uh, at the cost of development without even increasing anything which would hurt the common man. So it was a difficult period. And I just, in last para which I mentioned, that everybody thinks that the minister, to be a minister of railway is a great thing. It certainly is a very big thing. But I only know what all difficulties a minister of railway goes through. Other day I was with my friend Suresh Prabhuji. I went to his room. It was around 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, the railway minister Suresh Prabhuji tells that I have not even had a cup of tea since morning. At 5 o'clock he said, no question of lunch. And I tell you this is a routine because there is a lot of aspiration of the people. It is very, very difficult for a single minister for railways to fulfill. I remember I had about more than 6,000 requests on various things. Suresh Prabhuji may have 7,000. Mamta Banerjee would have had 10,000 because her accessibility to people is absolutely open. Anybody can virtually, even today as the Chief Minister of Bengal, anybody can just go and meet. And she will never say no to any development work. So, sir, what I am getting at, I am getting at one basic thing. That what do we want to do with Indian Railways? I remember as a Minister for Railways, I was invited to discuss on the draft 
report of the planning commission of 12 five year plan at that point in time suresh ji had mentioned that please understand let us talk that what do we want out of indian railways do we want indian railways to be a transportation system only for poorest of the poor from point a to b or we want railways to be instrumental in adding 2 and 1/2% to the gdp to the growth of the nation whereby we ensure that the poorest of the poor also gets benefit to it so other day we talked about price rise in this very house and i can tell you sir and i'm sure suresh ji will agree with me that there is no way you can contain inflation if your transportation system is not robust the very fact that some of the food grains get rotten it cannot be transported are are, are the questions that what do you want out of the railways this is still my basic question as to what you want out of the railways sir indian railways is capable of certainly adding much more perhaps more than 2 and 1/2% to the gdp i think most of us we do not have to use lot of our brains when we go to any country we can make out whether this country is at what stage of economic development whether it is a developed country developing country or underdeveloped country only by seeing what kind of transportation systems they have and i am afraid sir there is a lot to be done i remember uh, a very dear friend of mine sanjay pugulia when uh, again my dear honorable friend narendra bhai took over he asked me on television and it's on record that how how do you think this government is going to function i said i am not an astrologer i do not know but i can tell you one thing i can't tell you how many years whatever it is that is political but i can tell you that lot will depend on how he looks after the railways and i am aware that that railway is his pet project as well if the railways get derailed then i am i am afraid number wise years wise the country will go on and perhaps the party will go on but as far as the progress is concerned i am not very sure and sir i am i'm today i'm not very happy to say that things are not what we are capable of and the reason is not to do with the railways themselves the reason is not the honorable minister it is because of him that whatever things are happening in terms of augmentation of funds and i am aware that he he has solutions out of the box running around to lic which nobody had thought of but lic also will charge interest sir just imagine we have been talking about and these are all the pet projects of this government and i think most everybody would support like cleaning ganga can you can you imagine india just imagine india which i had also mentioned in my speech as a minister can you in, imagine india without himalayas i'm sure we can't there is no india without himalayas can we imagine india with the holy river ganga obviously not the entire sustenance of india is because of himalayas and ganga and i want to add to that is the indian railways so can you imagine india without indian railways just not possible okay. not possible at all and that is why when you have the priority of himalayas cleaning up ganga i think one of the priority has to be the indian sir i have not even started sir i have 15 i have sir i have not even start and i am on a substantial point sir So sir i am i am on a basic point sir point. you have you have to give me at least at least 10 minutes sir because there was lot of ruckus you can't take that time away please sir and i am on a very constructive thing 
I am not going to talk anything which is not going to be useful to this house and to this country, I can tell you for sure. Sir, if we, if we look at that we have got more than 30 years project, three projects, we have projects which are, 20, uh, which are 10 years old, we have projects which are 30 years old, and if we want to fulfill all these projects, then we require perhaps maybe 5 lakh crores, who knows? So the thing which I am going, getting at is the very history of this Convention Committee report. So why, why should we have this Convention Committee to begin with? The, the Chairman of Convention Committee is, is a very capable uh, person, uh, Honorable Mehtabji. It is not reflection on that. So the history of Convention Committee is a British colonial. When railway was started, they wanted to take money out of the railways. Railway was never seen as something which is going to integrate the country. The very fact, sir, do you know that this committee itself is an ad hoc committee? I, I am not reflecting anything as far as the competence is concerned, but this is a system. Sir, the in, and I tell you, where is the problem? The problem is the Indian Railway is defined. How it is defined, sir? The basic thing with a lot of honorable members perhaps may not know. A lot of honorable members came up to me and said, what is this convention committee? The fact is we don't, are not even aware, but that is one of the most important committees. That is the committee which decides on the dividend rate. And I tell you where is the basic problem, sir? The basic problem is in the definition of the railway. And I have taken this, Meghwalji is here, he was an honorable member of that committee, we lost him and he has become minister, my com compliments to him. The basic problem is the definition of the railways. And what is the definition? The Indian Railway is a departmental commercial, mind you, commercial undertaking of government of India. Commercial, it was okay as long as it was under the British that the British, whatever penny they invested, they wanted a return out of it. Sir, so can you have return out of Defence Ministry? Can you have return out of roadways? Can we say that we are putting in so much of money in education? We should get some interest out of education. No! These are the organisation and setups and ministries which are building India. But this country is free today and we are very happy that a lot of our martyrs, a lot of our citizens got uh, martyrdom and we got freedom. But unfortunately, railway still is not free from this colonial legacy. I really had to cry to get 24,000 crore from the then uh, finance minister, now Honorable President of India, Dr. Pranab Mukherjee. I said, why? I can't make a budget if you don't give me that. On one side, you don't give the freedom to the railways and rightly so that we have so many poor people. You can't keep on increasing the fare and the freight. On other side, all of us, the entire country wants Suresh Prabhu to be a magician. Everybody wants underbridge, overpass, this project and incidentally, there are so many railway projects in Bengal and we have been talking about it. Please kindly see to it that it gets passed. So the railway finances have been separated from the general finances as per the separation convention of 1924. And till then, railway was actually making a lot of money and I can tell you I have got figures that between the year 1898 and 1924, railways made a profit of 103 crores. That is where the Britishers thought that this is a Kamdhenu guy and we must get interest out of it. And I personally feel that we have to very seriously consider what do we want to do with this railway. And I also want to suggest, like we have a national policy on defence, we also have a national for, uh, policy on foreign affairs. Why can't we have a national policy on Indian railways? Why can't we all collectively make sure that the money which is given to the railway 
that money is not basically uh, for anything else, but that money basically goes in making sure that this country gets the transportation system, because without that basic infrastructure, nothing can grow. Sir, I'm surprised. I'll just take another three minutes and I'll be done. Sir, please have patience. I'm surprised with this one resolution, which I'm reading from the report. The contribution to the Depreciation Revenue Fund, DRF, may be allowed to be made in consonance with the capacity of the system to general internal resource. Sir, you know what does it mean? It means that if railway cannot, if railway cannot have generation of internal revenue, because salaries are increasing, pensions are increasing, then you cannot have a railway uh, fund which goes into depreciation, which means what? If one of your railway bridges of one of the line requires repair, you don't have money for that. Can we put the system into jeopardy? There are more than 10 to 15 people every day die in Mumbai railways. Do you mean to say because of paucity of funds? So my suggestion is that we must get out of that. We must ensure that like all the other ministries, because today Indian Railway belongs to India, like the Himalayas and Ganga, we cannot afford to have this treatment of commercial thing. And I dare say that Indian Railways cannot be treated as a commercial entity. Nowhere in the world, sir, the railways have the capacity to earn money and plough it back. China was about 15 years behind Indian Railways, maybe about 20, 25 years back. Today they have gone so far that we can't even make up. Japan took money from the World Bank at a very, very low interest rate. So no railways in the world, please understand, no railways in the world can run in profit. Entire infrastructure has to be given by the government. As far as the running of the railway is concerned, that's a different story. The running of the railway has to be that you do not make money, you do not make losses. That has to be efficient. Sir, I know before you ring the bell, I know you would ring the bell in another minute. I had a lot to talk, but I understand this is not, we are talking on the budget of the railway, but this convention committee has to be deliberated. And people, I, I strongly recommend that you must go through the history. And the time has come where we must have a national policy on railway, because railway is a big asset. And I will just read a poetry and conclude. Rail gari ki chuk chuk mein hi Aam Admi ki dhag dhag hai. Rail gari ki chuk chuk mein hi Aam Admi ki dhag dhag hai. Rail gari ki barkat mein hi Desh ki barkat hai. Rail gari ki barkat mein hi Desh ki barkat hai. Rail gari ko kush dular ki zarurat hai. Thodi rahat, thodi chahat, thodi pyar ki zarurat hai. Rail gari ki chuk chuk mein hi Desh vasiyo ki dhag dhag hai. Thank you very much, sir.